Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shalama Lawson. Bulawayo residents have expressed concerns about the increasing number of unregistered herbalists in the area. Eunice Feradzai has more. Unregistered herbalists have flooded the city of Bulawayo with some selling herbs that are posing health risks to users. ATV spoke to some of the herbalists who are operating in the city centre for their trade. I'm trying our products. Uh, they're supposed to reach to the land where well, they are sealed. We were having some people who just open products and then the market the open the products. A number of Bulawayo residents expressed mixed feelings about Hebalis and Inyangas. profit <laughs> It's not good to no profit and number Some of the residents are accusing the herbalists of selling them fake herbs. A health practitioner, Dr. Lav Mozuli, implored herbalists to work in conjunction with medical experts. I advise the traditional healers have to work in conjunction with the, with the medical fraternity. That will help in other ways. But if, if it is in just in general approach of that nature, uh, from my own uh, personal observation, it's affecting a lot. Some herbs have side effects when consumed in excess. Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe was quoted in the media recently, saying that it is developing regulations for herbalists to register their medicines as complementary drugs. I'm Eunice Ferreza, reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Each day, hundreds of desperate job seekers are heading to the labor office in Bulawayo in search of employment. Felu Mklanga has the following report. Unemployment in Bulawayo has risen sharply following the closure of companies in the last decade due to poor economic performance, leaving thousands jobless. ATV recently visited the labor office and spoke to some desperate job seekers. They were just coming here to try our life. Uh, we spend almost uh, the whole month in Bautorwa and the recruitment percentage is about 5%. So now maybe for the whole month it was used to go to three. We have to the 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 a Blawayo councillor, Edward Manning, called for the urgent resuscitation of industries to keep unemployment. Uh, Zimbabwe is sitting on a time bomb. If uh, government and uh, local authorities, commerce and industry don't come together and think somehow to sort out this problem, we'll have it uh, a big problem. Over 20,000 retrenched people in the city are seeking employment. According to the government, 87 companies in Blawai shut down due to viability challenges rendering 20,000 people jobless. Government allocated $40 million to resuscitate ailing Bulawayo firms, although critics say it's inadequate. A number of initiatives have been proposed to revive the industries, but it remains to be seen how these industries will create more jobs. Reporting for ATV, Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. An event hosting children with disabilities was held at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe last week to commemorate the Day of the African Child. Jairo Sonyama reports. The National Gallery of Zimbabwe last week hosted an art exhibition in Harare to commemorate the Day of the African Child. Children with physical disabilities drawn from different schools in the capital attended the exhibition. 
The gallery officials told ATV that the exhibition was meant to educate the children about their rights. Um, this year the theme focuses on the disabled child. We are proud to celebrate this through dance, through creativity, which is what we are best um, known for, the visual arts. We have um, students, our artists in residence at the National Gallery that are drawing and painting and expressing what it means to them to be an African child. As, as an art gallery, it is good that we are bringing them to, to, to the show that they also get to understand the things about art and to give them at least something, you know, to, to have a taste and a feel of what art is. Upcoming visual artists were also given an opportunity to showcase their talents during the event. I can really, you know, express something by this year, International of African Child, because um, my expressions are, you know, express through pandemic drawings. Uh, it will be relating to the event and uh, also, you know, motivator and um, their voice must be heard as disabled children. And Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. The Warriors supporters are in high spirits after their team's victory at the weekend. Jeffrey Moyo spoke to some of them about the winning performance. Warriors supporters were last Sunday ecstatic about their team's victory against Burundi in the second round of the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying match held in Harare. Zimbabwe booked a place in the last qualifying stage with a slender 1-0 win over Burundi. <laughs> Some supporters complained that the team's victory had taken too long to come. As a celebrator, oh, after a long, long time, so I want to go for my warriors. It's been a long time since we have won, so I'm expressing my joy that uh, this time we have won and progressed to the next stage. However, others attacked the national team for performing dismally in the recent 2014 World Cup qualifying match against Guinea. <laughs> They demanded for the head of one of the players, Oscar Machapa. Machapa, they are mum misa tangsa umu anu kwanza kutamba namba yu. La faraja yu shunegui na kateta nasi. Aso kumbira bana Raman Gumbonda, aga zirisa bana Oscar Machapa. Don't go worry, let's go. Some fans urged the country's football governing body, Zifa, to put its house in order. Zifa, which has been facing serious financial problems, has also been rocked by a match-fixing scandal. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo, Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.